Um, what do you hope people take away from the lovely bones? For me, there are two really prevalent themes. One is life, and it's the idea that, um, you know, the story begins with a death, but it's all about Susie's life and her celebration of what life on Earth is. And I think that's really important. It makes you kind of think it's the whole seize the day sort of thing. It's take advantage of it while you have it. And the other thing for me was acceptance. I think um, mm. the fact that, you know, you, you've lost somebody and everybody deals with it differently, and you have to accept not only the loss, but each other in that time of grief. And that's really powerful for me. Yeah, um, well, as the title explains, um, I mean, it does take a little bit of thought, but there is acceptance as well. That's one of the things that I took away from it, and I hope that the audience will too. Um, but the lovely bones, everything was destroyed when Susie was killed. The family, their relationships with one another, their lives, everything. But slowly... Um, they were able to come together and the bones of their love were able to connect back up and um, they were the lovely bones that joined them all together again and I really like that, I, I like the way that represents the love that they have for one another and how that can overcome all of the hatred that they felt for Mr Harvey and, and all of the horror that they went through for so many years. Um, you both have fairly intense scenes with Stanley Tucci, uh, or very intense scenes. Yours is a little uh, disconnected. I don't want to give anything away about it, but tell me about working with him, because he's been an actor who I think can do anything. I mean, we saw him earlier this year in Julia and Julia, where he was very funny and loving and warm, and then in this one he is exactly the opposite of that. So tell me a little bit about working with him. Well, that's what makes Stanley so brilliant, mm. is he has such a diverse range of capabilities. He can play somebody who you just hate, like you really dislike him in this film. But, um, I mean, Stanley as a person is incredibly warm and friendly and yeah. and lovable, and I think he's just so brave and he's so talented. He's an actor's actor. He doesn't do... He's never just being himself. That's not what he does in films. He um, creates something, or he obviously uses elements of himself and brings them to something so different, and it makes him just a chameleon on screen. He's phenomenal. Mm. Um, well, yeah, for me the same. I mean, I felt so comfortable when I was with Stanley and very secure in his presence and I just felt very safe and I I hope, I think that he felt the same way. So it was great for us to feel that way about one another and be able to put that intensity on screen and go to some very awkward, uncomfortable places. And, um, yeah, and everything that I've seen Stanley in, he's been different. It's quite funny, actually, that Julie and Julia came out at the start of the year and Lovely Bones at the end, and they're completely different from one another. I love that Stanley says Julie and Julia was like his antidote after playing Mr. Harvey. Yeah. You know, he, he shot that and then was able to kind of go to Europe and drink wine and um, eat grapes and <laughs> just live it up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the scene, uh, and again, I don't want to give too much away here, but um, he pulls you down off the ladder in the yeah. sort of underground bunker. Must have been incredibly intense to, to shoot. It was very intense. Um, through the whole duration of the shoot, though, the atmosphere on set was very light, and we all had so much fun, and it was just fantastic. But, um, but we knew when we had to be a little bit more serious and uh, not joke around quite as much. And um, and it was good. I think it was good to go to that intense place for a little while. Um, and Stanley and I had to do that a lot, you know. Well, I've heard that often when you're making uh, very serious dramas, very heavy dramas, that often those are the sets that are kind of the most lighthearted, I guess, because you have to blow it off a little bit between takes. That's also the case when something really serious happens. You know, when something really traumatic happens, you often, your emotions are so heightened and... I mean, some of the silliest behaviour comes out of those times, or people do completely ridiculous things. It's, um, I think when, when your sensitivity is that aware and evoked, I think that's when there is a lot of humour. And, I mean, you cry just as much as you laugh. But, but, yeah, I think the nature of it is to be able to find something lighter. That's human conduct, I think. It's interesting, actually, because the same thing happened with Atonement when we were on that set. We had so much fun, and it's quite a serious movie. But I remember when we screened the film, and about two or three times, I think it was in the library scene, or when Bryony sees Lola, not to talk about another movie, but they started to laugh, because they were nervous or something. They felt like they had no other outlet. That mm -hmm. was something that they needed to do in order to stay sane and or I don't know what it was comfortable than crying sometimes yeah it was yeah. something like I don't know but it's strange how people react in, in very different ways it was a very nervous kind of laughter when you don't know what else to do you exactly giggle. Yeah. yeah thank you so much thank you lovely to nice see you. To meet thank you. you nice to meet you thank you, nice to meet you. Thank you. Richard